about fact versus fiction. We've written a lot about what you can and can't see with a thermal imaging camera. In truth, what you can see with this device really comes down to the person holding it, their education, and their understanding. The device itself can see surface temperatures and the temperature differences coming off of it. We're taught the camera cannot see gas temperatures, cannot see smoke temperatures per se, cannot use it in a hazmat environment to see things such as ammonia leaks and alcohol gases or alcohol fires, things of that nature. What I need to understand about it, though, is if I understand how the, the heat is affecting the surfaces around it or the absence of heat, I may be able to see the effects of it, such as I cannot see a natural gas line where it's leaking. But if the natural gas line is cold and the areas around it is hot, I can see the effects of it. That doesn't define the hot zone and tell me how far the leak is going or any of that, but it can give me an idea where the source of the problem is. That's where, as Tom Zinn says in his article, The Language of Heat, I need to know just as much about what I'm looking at as what I'm looking through. So if I understand the context of my environment, building construction, hazardous materials, glass for, even, for an example, firefighters are taught all the time, ticks can't see through glass. Well, technically they can't see through anything. We're seeing temperature differences, heat, and reflected energy. So if I think about that for a second, and I look at my home, which is an older home, we have some single pane glass in the corners of our basement windows. Well, single pane glass doesn't stop infrared energy from going through it. That's why they don't put it in newer homes today, because it lacks something known as a low E coating. Low E stands for low emissivity, which means high reflectivity. So if you're dealing with homes or buildings with single pane glass, you may see heat emitting through the glass with a fire service thermal imaging camera. You're like, wait a minute. Somebody taught me you can't see through glass. You're not seeing through glass. You're seeing the energy transmitted or transferred through it. But what about double pane glass in a standard energy efficient home? You may not see the heat transmitting or transferred through it, but you can see certain things that is known as a thermal bridge. A thermal bridge is basually an area of weakness where the image, actual object is transferring energy through it or around it. So think about a standard double hung energy efficient vinyl window. Around the edges of the window, it's sealed with caulk or insulation. It's very flammable and fails quite quickly. You can see heat heat transfer around that known as thermal bridging. You'll see it in either repeating, non-repeating, or geometric thermal bridging. We'll talk about that later in some of our other videos. But we can also see when the glass heats up, what's inside an energy efficient double pane glass, argon gas, or an inert gas. It heats up and produces a cloudy effect on the glass itself that the camera picks up because it's picking up uneven heat transfer patterns. You're like, wait a minute, you said low emissivity objects, I can't pick up accurate temperatures on. I can't. I'm not looking for temperature. I'm looking for heat and I'm looking for non-uniform patterns that are indicative of a problem. Think about that. There are window thermographers. There are building thermographers. There are roof inspectors that are thermologists. There are all kinds of people that work in thermal imaging that use cameras to see things that you and I say can't be done. Granted, they're using industrial cameras with specific settings where they can dial them in and see those a little bit better. But if we learn from these other professionals and what they've already been doing, we can learn how to become even more intelligently aggressive on the fire ground and use that to our advantage. Whether it's a gas leak underground, whether it's a fire inside of a basement and we see the energy transferring through the window, all of these things can help us where we normally wouldn't see these things. They can help us be more efficient, find the fire faster, locate it, confine it, and also locate and find, and find the victim faster. I'm telling you, this device can help you so why are we not carrying it? Because the majority of firefighters don't properly understand what it can do, what it can't do, and how we can over overcome those limitations by using this. Stay intelligently aggressive.